This is Office Hours. The show for sharing experiences and stories in governance, risk management, and compliance. All right. Well, welcome back to Office Hours, everybody. This is episode 10, and I have another guest today. Um, For the first time on Office Hours, my good friend Shahed Khalili, who runs Strategy and Performance Solutions here at ACL, is joining me today, and he's going to tell us about when shit happens. Shahed, what shit happened? Well, in particular, Dan, shit happening with third parties. Okay. And uh, the whole idea, correct me if I'm wrong, but the whole practice of risk management is to prevent shit from happening. I guess so, yes, that would be good. (laughs) Yeah, so in this case, uh, in in most organizations rely on third parties to run their business and offer the services uh, to their customers or even their internal employees for their back office on third parties. Right. So not having a good handle on who they are what service they're providing and what internal or external service that we're providing to, uh, to pr- we're providing what the dependency is. If we don't have a good handle on that and we're not monitoring it, then things could go wrong. Sure, but what should actually happen? So what actually happened in this case? This was a, this is a current customer of ours, a company, a high tech company in Silicon Valley that. Uh, uh, Essentially, one of the one of the third parties that uh, one of their key services, key customer facing services, and uh, that they that they ha- have, there was a service outage uh, because the third party relationship wasn't handled right, and that was quite quite a significant outage as far as uh, the customer facing service they had, and that just uh, started started a whole uh, this whole thing. Sure. So that and so. Something happens with with a vendor of ours, third party, that that causes an outage for our customers. That's a problem, um, but it could get much worse than that, right? Uh, an outage is one thing, mm-hmm. but a breach of data, for example, might be a completely another. That's right. Yeah, some things, some, certain things are not reversible, and uh, you know, I re- I read this something somewhere in a, in one in a book that uh, <laughs> it was actually comparing <laughs> comparing. Uh, this any any service that any company offers to to the to pharmaceutical what's what's mandated to pharmaceutical in terms of in any advertising uh, that there is that uh, the disclaimer at the end of the article they start saying all the side effects a drug could have yeah. so imagine if that kind of mandate was on any organization and they would have to they would have to say hey you know you're mandated to say this at the end about about your third party and fourth party relationships yeah. Then the kind of the, the interaction between us and our customers would be like, hey, you know, we're doing everything we can, but the third parties that we use or the fourth parties, we don't really know what they're doing. Sure. So this has become a hot topic in financial services. They've actually That's regulated right. it. So with the That's regulators right. coming down, everybody's starting to do something about it. But I think what we're what we're realizing in the face of some of the breaches we've had that were caused by vendors, everybody's got to get serious about it now. So tell us how uh, you and your team solved the problem we talked you talked about before, mm-hmm. uh, how we changed processes for the service outages that occurred. Mm-hmm. Uh, very good question. So. Uh, we, uh, I'm going to run down, run through the whole, the whole project with you, but just to give you an idea in terms of the scope of what we were tackling, uh, as far as the whole third party risk management or third party management in general, uh, is we were, we, we were working with them and the, really where that starts at the, at the heart of it is your third party catalog is knowing, uh, all the third parties, the suppliers, the service providers, the vendors, all, all the ones that you have a relationship with sure. and, and they're providing you a service or product, who they are, what is the contract? What is the, sure. uh, uh, knowing, knowing everything about that. And then all the procedures and policies that you have around it from all the way from acquisition. So sourcing them, uh, so from business, uh, provide, uh, making a request on this is the new service or the sure. new product that we want to buy to doing your, all the due diligence from security, due diligence, cybersecurity, reputational risk, uh, compliance, uh, due diligence, all that to managing the contract, to monitoring the performance of the third party and also the transitions and terminations so these, or renewals. So these key processes, even though perhaps we have, you know, we have a vendor master list in our ERP system that, that ideally is at least some portion of all of our third parties. Those, in this case, we needed to build or understand each of those processes that you've laid out here mm-hmm. to say, um, what are key risks? What could go wrong within each of these processes? Controls within them, and how do we keep mm-hmm. an eye on making sure we don't have something go off the rails? Yeah, that's right. And uh, a little correction on what you said, because on the ERP system, we don't we really have 
a list of all the third parties that were paying. Yeah, yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> so everything else about that relationship is not there. Yeah. Uh, and most likely in most organizations, depending on the level of maturity or, for example, financial institutions, it's more because it's man- mandated. In most other organizations, that information is all over the place. So, for example, you have your InfoSec team that has portion of the information. You have procurement that has some of that information. Uh, it's yeah. it's all over the place. There is uh, the seldom you have it. You have it all centralized, and really, that's that's the heart of this whole program for it to function properly. Okay, so take us through how you um, how you undertook this and, and resolved the. So I'm going to kind of run you through through the journey how it started. Uh, basically, there was an event that we discussed that triggered this whole thing happening. You know, <laughs> service outage is bad for business. And, <laughs> and something happened, uh, unfortunately, in this case. And most organizations, they identify the risk before anything happens, and then they start. Sometimes they start that's doing. what it takes to light the fire. Exactly. And really, Dan, that sets the right tone at the top <laughs> if shit <laughs> yeah, does okay. happen. So. so you had the right tone at the top <laughs> for So this, this, this for yeah. us, compared to other engagement, this was really good because the tone as the, at the top was set. Okay. So that, that was, uh, I guess blessing in disguise, if we mm-hmm. say. So we got engaged. Uh, and like any any type of engagement, like we need to uh, start and understand, you know, like from, from going from identifying the yes, problem to, to solution. Yes, you need to start. That's true. You need to start. But from start to the end, it's not a straight line. Okay. That's that's <laughs> what I was trying to say, that it's not, uh, you really uh-huh. need to sort of diverge and converge to, to, uh, to get to the right solution. So that's, the initiation of the project is let's let's try to understand what are we dealing with, uh, what is the landscape of of a vendor management lifecycle or third party management lifecycle in that organization. Mm-hmm. So doing a whole review of what are the processes they have in place, uh, what are the policies they have, are there any regulatory mandates uh, that is either mandated by the industry or self imposed uh, for, uh, on themselves. What are the technologies that they're using uh, for procurement, for their ERP system, for their security assessments, and so on? Uh, what are the workflows and processes involved? Who's involved? So, co- sort of understanding understanding the the current okay. s- current uh, landscape. Yep, taking inventory. And then the next piece of inventory is the data, is knowing what we know about mm-hmm. the, about the third parties, and and this ended up being uh, more time consuming than we thought. And the less and there was a shift that happened in the middle of this that I'm going to share. Uh, and it was a very good learning. Had we known that, we would have started with that in mind and be done with it a lot quicker. The learning there was this part, the information is scattered across different department and it's not a side of the desk job for a person. So the lesson learned there is if you're taking on a, a project to improve third party risk management, just understand and assume you're taking on a data project. You're taking on a data project and you're taking on a data project that's touching uh, multiple multiple departments. Mm-hmm. So to say that the mandate is on one mm-hmm. person yeah. in their, in, uh, on their desk and you know they already have their day-to-day job, the, the tasks that they need to do and they do this on top of that on the side of your desk and go put all the, get, gather all this information together is not going to work. It's going to take forever. Uh, so what ended up happening is the moment we put a project manager in charge to collaborate cross department and bring all these together, set timelines and milestones in place to make sure that this is happening, it expedited the whole thing quite rapidly. Okay. So uh, we had essentially for all the third parties, third party relationship and all the contracts that we had for them, we managed to bring in everything together. Mm-hmm. and centralize it in one location. So having a master catalog of all the vendor, all third-party relationships and right. contracts, and then gathering all the information that was scattered uh, across different departments. For example, at the time that we were in the middle of this, GDPR was pretty hot for this organization. Mm-hmm. So they were gathering a lot of information for, or for, for their third parties, you know, sub-processor, processor, sub-processor, uh, and saying what data they're hosting, doing some additional security due diligence on those on those vendors that host their employee or customer data and so on. So there was a lot of data that was that existed and was being gathered. It was just not central. So okay. So we put it all in one place. Next thing is now that we know what the processes were, what are the gaps in the process? So obviously, you know, something went wrong and there was a control failure or there was a process that wasn't being followed or the policies weren't set right. 
So we're understanding what are the gaps and procedurally uh, and also the controls that are in place or also the system and the workflows of technology that's being used. What are the gaps? What do we need to change? Okay, sure. So the, so, the, so you've, you've mapped the processes, identified the risks, and evaluated the controls. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So is there a scorecard or something that comes out of that? There is a scorecard that comes out of that. First, first thing is the managing, uh, sort, sort of the documentation side of it and managing all the third-party processes. Right. Okay, yep, selection, acquisition, performance, yep. Yeah, so then if I actually take it back up to show you the scorecard that you're talking about to show you the health of that. Mm -hmm. In our framework, as we've defined the, uh, the third-party risk management, Right, third-party risk management. So this is where you identified all the processes mm -hmm. downstream. You're evaluating the controls. Yeah. Um, and Okay, and so here I can see what's passing and what's failing. That's right, based on the data. So the data and the controls, the data is showing whether the, uh, the controls are passing or failing. Right. And so then we, that's rolling up to these section objectives on which ones are effective and not. Right, so this, this, you prepared, you effectively have prepared a scorecard that talks about how effective each of these processes are within mm -hmm. managing third parties, and then an overall roll-up score of how effective we've kind of filled the program is overall. Who did you share this scorecard with? Well, this scorecard would go up to the CIO and the CISO. Okay, because yeah. they're primarily, being a technology company, they're in particular they're in charge concerned of, with that's right. technology yeah. vendors. So in a financial yeah. institution, most like likely us, that would be the... We mostly buy stuff from other technology vendors. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. That so in, in a financial institution, most likely this will go roll up to the chief risk officer. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, so this this will only give you the scorecard on your operations and performance. This is not giving you uh, the scorecard on the vendors themselves. Uh, okay. So the, all the yeah. catalog, the yeah. vendor catalog that we were talking about, that's different. So this is sort of your operation scorecard. Effectiveness of the programs. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Let me show you, for example, on the renewal side. Yeah. And so that's the, one of the data. Processes. That's yeah. So based on the catalog that we've that we've put in place, we know exactly how many vendor contracts that we have in place. Uh, okay. Within four four months is when we trigger that we want to initiate the renewal or the transition process, whether or not we want to renew. Mm -hmm. And this is continuously monitoring monitoring that in the 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 catalog and kicking off the workflow for the renewal to happen and giving you that visibility on how many third-party relationships they are and out of those, how many, what are, how many contracts are up for renewal, what is the total amount of that, and then in terms of the renewal state, where is that at? So renewal is initiated and it's under contract negotiation and it's going to procurement and so yeah, on. Yeah, that's them interesting. Are so and so, on. so out of, I have, hundred in this case, 132 third parties I'm working with, multiple contracts at some of those third parties. That's right, yeah. So we end up with more contracts than third parties. Mm -hmm. But then in, as part of this process, going through the renewal, I can kick off a workflow. You, you put in place controls to kick off workflow to say, hey, first of all, here's a good idea. Why don't we check and make sure we're even still using this bloody service step before we even renew it? Yeah. So go back to business and say, is this, is this still a viable service or product? Are they meeting your requirements yeah. and needs? And do you Through want to some stay kind with of this? questionnaire yeah. workflow? That's, that's the first step of the workflow. So yeah. business then confirms and says, yes, we like to keep them. And then that will go depending on how the, the, that, uh, that third party contract has been categorized in terms of the risk and the required due diligence, then that will kick off the appropriate workflow. Sure. For example, <laughs> and this is why it's important that not to mistake, you don't do the due diligence on the, on the vendor or the third party themselves, you do it on the product or service. Yeah. So for example, in, you could have two products from that vendor, one of them doesn't require any type of security due diligence, another one may require because the other one is hosting your customer data, for example. Right. So uh, that is identified that it requires uh, to, uh, to do a security uh, review, security assessment. It needs to go to the vendor, back to the vendor for the vendor to do their own self-assessment uh, to say that, yeah, for example, uh, Mr. Third Party, uh, you were PCI compliant. And uh, are yeah. you still did are you still did you still re remain PCI compliant this year? Sure. And did you get a third party audit this year as well? And and attach a final report. So going through that due diligence, depending on the on the risk, how okay. how they were categorized. Yep, great. And that yeah. due diligence may be fed, of course, by 
just like any step in the workflow, I mean, I don't think we need to go through every step of, of the process because each organization's process is going to be a little bit unique. Mm. But the idea there being that each step in these, just like any other process, validating it and seeing how effective it is may concern one of two things, using assessments and questionnaires mm-hmm. to get information from people or perhaps feeding it with data. So, for example, maybe I access data from a vendor like BitSight or, or, or Security Scorecard or, mm-hmm. some, or, or um, Dun & Bradstreet or whoever, right. the, whoever yeah. the case may be. Mm-hmm. That's all just data that could, that could be analyzed and, and feed the assessment or if we can't do it via any of that, then we send out assessments and questionnaires. That's right. Or yeah. a combination of both. Yeah. You need to do both. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let me show you, like, for example, uh, like you said, this is, ju- this is just mocking super and super simplifying what a self-assessment could be. Yeah, because it's probably going to be different per, per yeah. organization, um, per uh, different type of vendor risk category and right. so on. Right. We get these from banks yeah. that have three or four hundred questions in them. <laughs> Yeah. That's right. Multiple, multiple pages. Yeah. But the general idea of, you know, some person chasing after him and trying to get that information is simplified by just being part of the workflow and a simple survey being sent out to the vendor. Uh, similarly to the same same type of idea, same same survey being sent out to the business owner and in the initial right. assessment. Yep. We'll go in and say, yeah, have you done this? Yes, no. Provide the the reason, or if you've been audited, you know, give us you give us a copy of your of your final report and so on. Sure. And they submit this, and then this will feed back into this workflow. Into the workflow. Uh, so that it goes through the right approval process. By the time it gets to the contract negotiation, you've done all your due diligence. You have all that information in in the system, so you know how to yeah. how to proceed uh, with with your contract negotiation and, proc- and and procurement. Got it. Okay. So now you've centralized for the the customer you were working with. Centralized the data, documented the process, mm-hmm. risk controls, mm-hmm. um, built workflows around evaluating each of those. Uh, evaluating each of those t- controls through additional data and analytics or through assessment questionnaires. That's a pretty robust project. Where did you go from there? Uh, I don't know. Let's go back to our timeline so I remember yeah. what I had in mind. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, we centralized it. And we yeah, did talk about the workflows. The workflows. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And lots of workflows, Dan. Like, I could talk about the workflows quite, quite a lot, but <laughs> right. we'll keep it... F- because you had like what yeah. half a dozen processes there, and That's there right. may be workflow. Uh, you know, each of those half dozen processes may have may have ten controls in it, or whatever the case may be, and there exactly. could be a whole workflow around every one of those. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So for compliance, for legal. But for having business, done that, yeah. I mean, at, at the risk of this, there's a no marketing rule here on office hours, but if with the right partner, with the right experience, somebody probably has a recommendation for you about. Mm-hmm. about those processes and workflows to jumpstart the whole program. Yeah, that's right. So this, uh, I showed you some of that as well. So the management uh, and executive dashboards, uh, so this is a sort of a sample of what you saw on the renewal dashboards. And this is something for more people, management than people on the ground. Yeah, I like what you showed there because yeah. you showed us the scorecard. Scorecard is good for the, let's call it the risk executives or the mm-hmm. the something I can show CFO, CRO, et cetera, um, how effective the program is. But then you had dashboards to each of the specific processes, like the selection acquisition process That's that right. may be um, that may be relevant to the head of procurement That's or right. to the head of IT procurement or yeah. whatever or the case may be. Or InfoSec or, or legal for contract right. renewals. Yeah. And, yeah. and even for the business owners, having a general dashboard uh, that anyone who's request who's, who has made a request uh, for uh, for a new acquisition of, of of a service or product for them to be able to right. track where that's at. When I'm getting frustrated yeah. that I can't get my yeah. vendor set up, what's the status? We, yeah, exactly. The we, we here at ACL has have what we call a TAP technology acquisition process. program process. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah, exactly, and it's quite extensive in terms of the due diligence that we do on right. our own third party Transparency acquisitions. Transparency though keeps everybody happy. Transparency is key to making sure that the policies that you that you uh, oh. put in place. Uh, is adopted by employees. Uh, so, for example, if we if we train our employees on here's the process around acquisition and this is all the due diligence we need to do, when you have transparency to what is getting sure. done and where yep. where it's at, employees are more likely to adopt that as well. And, all right, yeah. you still got blank timeline yeah. there, Shad. My beer's getting low. All right, I talk too much. I know. <laughs> uh, so. 
all this stuff uh, was in place, but now uh, is when we get into sort of the reality check. Oh, I like and, this actually. And this, this is, is this is where we're we're saying, okay, we had all these processes and workflows in place and and so on, but is is it really happening? I see this get missed all the time. So mm -hmm. tell us what you did. So the idea here was well. Okay, we built our vendor catalog and we assumed it's complete. So let's make sure that every single third party that we pay is part of that list. Right. So it's not as simple as that because uh, there are third parties that they're so low risk that we don't really care to do any kind of due diligence on. You know, like sure. you have a con, you know, you're hosting an event, you have someone to come and provide service for sure. preparing coffee or something. You know, you don't want that. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of quick false positive or things that are not really an exception sure. that shouldn't have gone through that process. But what we found was quite a big gap I immediately in terms of number of vendors that should have been in the catalog and uh, that weren't. Right. So, so what you're getting at is we're going to have a vendor master list in the ERP system that's gigantic, mm -hmm. much bigger than the vendor catalog that we're keeping track of that's, that's key right. vendors. Yeah. But if I look for... IT vendors that aren't in the vendor catalog. That then might be. That's a red flag. Yeah. yeah. Or vendors that I've spent a ton of cash with. I've mm -hmm. spent $5 million with. Why aren't they in the vendor catalog? So rules to identify. That's right. We have, we have vendors that are, that are skipping the system. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. a really good step. I really like. Yeah. That. So being able to show show them all the all the payments that AP or procurement yeah. is is paying and being able a quick workflow on on investigating those those exceptions or those yeah. those those why anomalies. Did we not see, yeah. Yeah. Why didn't we see that? Then then that would kick off the whole thing. Like, okay, is this the wrong relationship to be in, <laughs> or, or or is our CEO's catalog pet not vendor, complete? whatever yeah. the case is? Yeah. Exactly. So for now, where we at because this is. The program hasn't been out for for long enough. Uh, it's more of a it's a gap that we didn't have in our catalog, and we're continuously completing our catalog. Yeah. But I foresee three months or six months down the road, once we're assured that our catalog is complete, then it's truly going to be you know the net that catches yeah, for, catches anything. This would be that a great tool. This through. will even be a great tool for watching for. Um, Potential corruption issues, trying to subvert the vendor system down that's the road right. we, with big international yeah, operations. That's yeah. right. Yeah, very good. We'll get to that as well. Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> very soon, in fact, because uh, <laughs> really, once that was in place, then we we're good to go. And it was uh, the launch uh, of the program. And uh, like any other program that we roll out, it comes with some change management and some training and the organization. Uh, more training on obviously more training for people who are involved, uh, infosec, legal, compliance, and so on. So because yeah. they're part of the workflow, yeah. uh, a lot less training for the general employees in terms of um, if you're may, if you want to buy purchase something, this is the process. Ren you own it. Renewal. A little bit of training, so but on. at least we're centralized. Yeah. It's not based on tribal knowledge. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So that was that. Um, but what is more interesting, like this is not complete, there's always uh, things to do in future. So there is uh, a lot of future uh, phases and future ideas that we have in mind that we're gonna that we're gonna implement. Um, some of the things we talked about it during the chat as well, like for example, vendor performance monitoring is something we want to do and building a score vendor risk score yeah. model uh, so that based on, uh, performance monitoring from external sources such as DMB or whatnot, uh, uh, being able to identify any anything uh, about that vendor and then internally everything that we know about the vendor, how we're using it, what type of risk they have, sure. uh, building a score a risk scoring model that can then we can uh, assign, assign right. a risk score. So to even, each, each. even thinking clear back to the very first episode of Office Hours, we drew that maturity curve. In that mm -hmm. case, we were talking about socks. Yeah. But that totally applies to our third-party programs. Get out the door, get monitoring better, get the workflows in That's place. Right. Now get on to these more advanced topics of of scoring and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, if I dare say that applies to almost everything. Like trying to boil the ocean from the beginning is going to be such a big project that it's never going to end. Uh, so what we want is to solve for the things that are the problem today yeah. and then iterate and improve. Uh, it sounds like that's yeah. a topic for a future episode, the <laughs> the four-step maturity curve for, for, for third-party <laughs> risk programs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, for sure, yeah. 
So uh, let me just ask, um, was there, b- before we wrap up, I want to make sure and ask, though, how long implementing this program in a reasonable size company, what's the expectation of timeline? If you have a well-sponsored project. Okay, if you have a well-sponsored project, uh, we should be looking at like uh, no no more than two quarters. So I'm thinking like three to four months. Yeah. Yeah. So it takes you uh, three to four months, get, get the... Yeah. Get all the data centralized. Get configure these work the workflows. Yeah, all this build sort of the stuff. dashboards. Sure. Yeah. yeah, and all that stuff's pretty yeah. easy. But then that that mm-hmm. changing the processes that people so people right. know how to request. That's right. Vendor. And and the three to four months in terms of the technology implementation, it, it those hours is a lot less. The <laughs> three to four months is yeah. because of. Like you said, the process, the hard part. It's getting the process to get approved yeah. by all the people who want to have a say in the process, then all the interaction with collaboration between people to to gather all the data. There is, you know, their data, yeah. <laughs> dirty data, cleansing the data and all that. Th- that's that's the time consuming part. Effort wise, it's a l- very low, uh, but it could be time consuming because of all the Perfect. all the people yeah. that are involved. Well, you know what? I think there's there's a lot of work we do in all different areas of, of vendor and third-party risk management. I thought this was a compelling story um, since it began with that with the oops moment with an oops moment <laughs> yeah. and um, walk through the whole uh, walk through the whole implementation of a of a meaningful governance program. So, thank you for sharing that, mm-hmm. Shahed. Uh, any parting words for us today? Uh, no, uh, thanks for having me here. I look forward to future episodes and, and more great stories uh, Good, that I, I'm involved I in. I saved my yeah. last sip to say <laughs> great. cheers. Thanks, thanks for Chad. that. Cheers. Later, everybody.